In the previous two videos we made an enemy, go watch those. But today we will add a 3D model to our enemy along with animations and proper attacking. You can also check out the playlist. What we are going to do is get the models from Maximo and convert it from Blender. Then in Gato use the state machine which we created in last video to make the animations work. At last we will add collision shapes that move with the bones so we can add shooting in the next video. Let's download the model from Maximo. It's a website that provides free models and animations. You can use the search bar to look for specific models. I decided to go with this one. Press download. Now go to animations tab. We need for animations, idle, walking, running, and attacking. You can choose any animation you like. After that hit download. In the menu change with skin to without skin. For the walking animation the model also moves. Check in place and download it without skin. Similarly download the other animations. Now we have our animations. It's time to convert our model into GLTF format because Gato has the best support for it and has limitation with FBX. In Blender delete everything. Then import the FBX file. Then export it in GLTF format in your Gato project. For animations, make sure to delete any existing objects in Blender. Import the FBX animations. Delete all armatures except one by pressing delete. If we go to the action editor, we can see the animations are here, but their names are messed up. You can play the animations to see which one it is and rename them based on that. Then just export it in GLTF format into the Gato project. In Gato the model is imported and the textures are extracted automatically. Select the animations file and under import settings change it to animation library and re-import it. Drag the zombie model in our enemy scene. Delete the capsule mesh that we had. Move the model down by 1 meter. Adjust the collision shape to fit the model. Right click and press make local to get access to its animation player. Go to animation and manage animations. 
Load animation library that we created. Now let's make the animations loop double click animations file. Go to each animation and select loop mode to linear. Add an animation tree. Select the tree root to new animation state machine. Assign the animation player. Go to animation tree. Press this button to add new animations. Left click and add animations. We will add the attack animation later in the video. You can also rename the animations. Now select connect animations. Connect the start to idle so when game starts it will play idle animation. Disable auto advance because we will do that in the script. Connect the animation to each other. In enemy chase script drag the animation tree while holding control to get the node. Create a new variable animation playback. We can get the playback from animation tree under parameters. In enter function, we will travel to the running animation. Do the same thing in wander state. We will travel to the animation in randomize variable function. When it's moving travel to walking animation and when it's still travel to idle animation. Lower the walk speed because our walking animation is slow otherwise it would look like our enemy is sliding. The animations are working but looking the wrong way. Let's get the velocity without its y axis. If the velocity is not zero, we can use the build and look at function to look in the direction the enemy is moving. Currently the model is facing away from us. We can fix that by rotating our model 180 degrees. The transitions between the animations are instant. In animation tree, we can select the transition and set a X fade time. It will fade in the animations. The reason the enemy looks snappy is because Gato's lookup function instantly rotates the enemy. We can use the lerp function and manually set the rotation for smooth rotation. The range of enemy is small so let's increase that. Now, let's add the attacking animation to our animation tree.
Start by connecting it to the running animation. Set the X fade value as needed. Next, go to the attack state and create a new function. Temporarily deactivate the animation tree. Then, open the animation player. To modify the animation, you'll need to edit the import settings. Locate the attack animation in the imported GLB file. Enable save to file and keep custom track. Choose a file path to save it. Once that's done, you can modify the animation. Add a new call method track. In this track, select the enemy's attack state. Then, find the frame in the attack animation where it looks like the enemy is hitting the player. Add a keyframe at that point and assign the function you just created. In that function, damage the player. Next, get the animation playback. In the enter function of the attack state, make it travel to the attack animation. Finally, reactivate the animation tree. Now the enemy attack should be working correctly. Now, let's make the enemy look at the player while attacking. Start by getting the animation playback from the animation tree. Use this to get the current animation. Next, get the player node. If the state is set to attack, make the enemy look at the player's global position. For the Y axis, use the enemy's own global position to prevent it from rotating up or down. Move the existing looking code into the else statement. Let's add a flashing effect to indicate when the player is hit. We'll use the on damage function that's already part of the health component. Add a canvas layer to the player. Move the health label into this layer as well. Add a color rect node. Set it to full screen. And change its color to red with a lowered alpha value. Add an animation player. Create a new animation in the animation player. Set the animation's length to a shorter value. At the start of the animation, make the modulate property fully transparent. At the midpoint, bring the alpha back up. and at the end, make it transparent again. Optionally, change the transition type to cubic for a smoother effect. Next, update the player script, change the path to the health label. Drag the animation player node into the script editor while holding control to create a reference. Create an on damage function that plays the animation Finally, test it in the game. Currently, the effect is to fast, increase the animation's length, and adjust the keyframes. Now, the flashing effect works perfectly. Now, we'll add collisions, which will be used in the next video for shooting. To set up collisions, add a bone attachment node to the skeleton. Anything added as a child of this node will move with the selected bone. Use the skeleton node to view the bones and choose where to attach the collision. For example, I'll use the spine bone for the torso. 
add an Area 3D node as a child of the bone attachment, then add a collision shape as a child of the Area 3D. Set the shape to capsule and adjust it to fit the torso. Next, duplicate the bone attachment by pressing Ctrl and D. Change the bone to head and adjust the collision shape to fit the head. For the arms, duplicate the bone attachment again, set it to the correct bone for the upper arm, and adjust the collision shape. Repeat this for the lower arm. When duplicating, make sure to right-click the collision shape and select Make Unique before making adjustments. Finally, do the same for the hand. Repeat this process for the other side of the body. Including both legs. Adjust each collision shape to fit properly. And that's it, we're done setting up collisions. Like this video and subscribe for more content like this.